Hey everybody, today we're going to be doing a little look in Dorico on how to do some more advanced note entry things, specifically some ways that you can copy music from one stave to another, and this is really handy when you're doing ensemble music and other things like that, and so this is one of those ways I really like to work on um, getting my music in quickly, so if I'm doing a commission or an arrangement, I'm much, much faster at just kind of snapping through it because I can grab exactly what I need, move it to the second trumpet part, and away I go. So here we go with some advanced copy paste note entry features here in Dorico Pro. All right, so I'm working on an arrangement of Jump Up Superstar from the Mario series uh, for a friend of mine here. And so I'm taking a look at this big band chart and I'm gonna try and uh, orchestrate and arrange some things. And so this is a perfect opportunity to show off some of these advanced features in Dorico. Now, one of the things that you probably already know about is that you can enter notes into the stave uh, more than one stave at a time. So you don't have to just enter just trumpet one and then trumpet two. You can actually enter the notes simultaneously in multiple staves. So if you go to this blank measure here and I go into the note entry tool, remember if I hold down shift and I start pushing down or up, it's going to start including the stave below, or if I went up, it would be the stave above, and so I'm actually highlighting all of these staves at once for note entry. And so especially if you're using a MIDI keyboard, what this means is I can hit a chord with say four notes because I have four staves selected and it will enter the notes from top to bottom into that stave. So if I play a C7 chord, for example, there you go. It auto enters all of the pitches right there in all four staves. So if you go into the note entry tool, you hold down shift and you hit up and down, then you can select more than one stave. This also works if you're using the lock tool, the lock rhythm, where you're just changing the pitches but not the rhythms. And so it's a really handy tool. But there is another way that I discovered recently that is equally as awesome and sometimes even more useful. And that is you can move and you can copy notes from one stave to the stave either above or below. And and so let's say I wanted to copy this melody part from the vocals into the trombone part above it. So if I was to, on my Mac, hold down Shift, Control, and hit V, you'll notice, bam, there it goes. It moved that part up one stave all the notes, everything I had selected. This also works for dynamics and other elements like that. And so you can just boom, and it'll copy it up. And if I want to do it again, again, I can hit Shift, Control, and V, and you'll see it will go to the next stave above wherever I have selected. Now, let's say I wanted to highlight and just traditionally copy and paste this up into the lead alto part, but I want the second alto part to double it. Well, if I hold down just Control and hit V, now it's going to do the staff below. And so this is a really handy, handy feature because you're able to literally very, very quickly copy notes to the stave above or below. And this is something that, you know, if you're like me and you use a lot of keyboard commands, this really speeds you up compared to using highlight, copy and paste, highlight, copy and paste. That's kind of the slowest way I can think of doing it, frankly speaking. Now, there's another cool feature in this is that you can actually move the notes. So let's say you didn't want this in trombone three, you only wanted it in trombone one and four. So if I hit option and N, you'll see that it actually moves all of those notes up to the stave above. And so now I can move that part up and so that if I wanted to do my original example, let's say I clear this out and I highlight this vocal part here and then I hit the shift control V to copy it. But let's say that, oh, that's gonna be too hard for the bass bone. Now I can hit option N and move it up. Now to be clear, this command that I just showed you does not work with multiple staves. For example, if I highlight two staves worth of music and hit the control V, which will copy down, you'll see what it does is it actually copies both staves, but just down one staff. And so you can see it ruined the second stave, but it did copy it to the other one. So you can only do this with one stave selected, unfortunately. Now let's say, again, we just learned that move command, again, option N to go up. You can also do option M to go down. 
Now this one does work with multiple staves. So let's say I wanted this in just the tenor sax part. I could hit the option N and I can move both of these parts up until I get to my tenor saxes. And let's say I wanted to grab all of this mess and I wanted to move it into my trumpet parts. You can highlight all four and then I can do option M and you'll see I can grab the whole block and pull them all down into the trumpets. Do note that if I don't select the first part, if I just select those notes, it'll actually, Dorico will move it through the music and so see it preserve that chord on, that I created on beat one, which was really handy. So that means if I want to like have a, a chord on beat one, but then I just want to copy a unison line down into the part, I can literally grab just a piece. So see, I could grab this part from the tenor part and I could hit that control um, v and move it down into the berry and you can see it adds it there but I could actually do the move command where I do the um, option M to move it down and you'll see again it preserves what was there before now in this case that's not what I wanted but let's say that I had this situation where I want to append to a measure and I want to take that blank space and move something into it. Now for both of these techniques, do notice this is not an overwrite command. This is not taking away what was already in the measure. So if you have something in the measure and you wanna do this copy command into a stave, it's not gonna work to overwrite what's there. It's literally going to copy it over the top of. So you are gonna have to clear out whatever was in the measure first. Now, if you um, are forgetting your hotkeys on this one, fortunately, these ones are easy to find. If you go up under the edit menu and you go under paste special, you'll see here are those commands I just showed you. Move to staff, move below, duplicate, duplicate. There's also another cool um, option, which is this one called swap, which is, does not have a hotkey automatically assigned. But let's say you really wanted your first trumpet to be below your second trumpet because you're trying to do a split lead part. If I highlight the notes in both parts like that, I'm gonna move it over here so it's a little easier to see. So again, I have both parts selected and then I go under edit, paste special and swap you can see that it just took whatever was in the top stave and moved it down and whatever was in the bottom stave and moved it up. And so that's a really handy tool if you get some voice crossing or anything like that and you just want to quickly kind of invert the way you have it notated. And so that's just, again, it's a really handy tool. Again, it's all under that paste special. This is also where you can find paste articulations. So if you go through and you highlight one group of measure and let's say I put articulation articulations on it, I could then very quickly hit control C and then I made a hotkey for this, but I'm going to go ahead and highlight all these brass parts and I, my hotkey happens to be all the modifiers, control, option, and command, and I hit V and look, it copied all of my articulations over. Now I know you might say, well, I could have just highlighted um, all the notes and entered them at the same time. But the problem with that theory is if I go back to where I um, want to enter them, if I want to put a staccato on this note, or excuse me, a marcato, a staccato, a accent, and then maybe another marcato, unfortunately Dorico won't preserve your selection. You'd have to like select all the notes, enter an articulation, go to the next note, select all of them. But once I have my pattern down in one part, I can go ahead and co again, Command C or copy, highlight everything else, and I can use that hotkey. Or again, I can go under Edit, Paste Special, Paste Articulations, and that way I can grab all of it. The other nice thing about this is it actually will preserve um, your articulations and it will put them wherever it's justified in a measure even if the rhythms aren't quite the same. So um, for example, if I was to go ahead and take that note and make it into an eighth note and then put more eighth notes in that bar and then let's say I put an accent on this one now, if I select my original measure here, but you see the rhythm is a little bit different and I control uh, command C to copy and then I use that paste articulation function again, 
you'll see that it didn't copy this accent that's on a note that doesn't exist in the other staves. So if you have an articulation pattern that partially applies, you can still use this same technique. Basically, the gist of this video is all of these things in the paste special menu. And you also have the idea of paste into voice. And so if I highlight this and I hit um, copy, and then I can go under paste special and I can paste into voice. This way I could paste into a new downstem voice. And see now I've created a second voice. Or let's say I want to paste it into um, a new, uh, uh, excuse me, a new voice that has, for example, stem up slashes. Boom. And then see, you can see it'll actually paste it in in the, the voice you're looking for. So if you were creating kind of a specialty part and you wanted to paste in another, like let's say I want to put this tenor part in the alto part, I can copy it, highlight the other measure here, and then I can go under paste special. And let's say I want to paste it into a new downstem voice. You can see it actually just pastes it in there with the original part in a different voice so they are separated, which is a really handy feature. The other two things you can do under here, under this paste special, is you can reduce and explode. So let's say you want to take your horn voicings, you want to make a one-handed piano voicing. So if I take all those notes and copy them, and then if I was to highlight these two blank measures and I was going to edit, paste special, and reduce, you'll see that it took all four notes and condensed them down in. Um, now this isn't like finale where you used to be able to use the condense command where it would take all the notes and crush them into the tops of the selection. This one actually requires that you highlight just one single measure if that's how you want to reduce it. However, if I wanted to highlight it into two measures and put half the notes in one and half the notes in the other, you can also do that. And you can see when I hit reduce, it actually took the bottom two notes and put them in the bottom two staves and the top two notes and put them in the top two staves. So again, it's a really great way of taking like multiple parts and creating a reduction for say piano voicings and other things like that. By the same token, if I highlighted my piano voicings down here and I wanted to turn those into trombone voices, I could um, command C to copy. I can highlight these two trombone measures and then I can hit, or excuse me, I can highlight four trombone measures and then I can hit paste special and explode and you'll see it'll take those four notes and it'll spread them out across the four different trombone staves. You can also, for example, highlight two trumpet and you could hit paste special and when you do that it'll explode it again it'll take the the four parts that I had and it exploded it into the number of staves I had selected now in this case you can see it preserved the top one and put all the extra notes in the bottom stave and so by that design if I did three you can see if I hit paste special so the top two staves are single notes and then the bottom staves has two notes and then again finally if I was to select all four, paste, special, explode, now it'll put one note per stave. So these are some really quick tips on how to get a little more efficient in your note entry in Dorico. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Keep those questions coming. I really, it's kind of fascinating sometimes when I'll get a great question that'll inspire me to do a little more research into things in Dorico. It, sometimes it yields whole new videos. So again, keep on those questions. And again, like and subscribe the channel. I really appreciate it. I'm pretty darn close to 10,000 subscribers. So I'm really trying to get up to that magic number there. I'm sure nothing big is going to change, but I think it'd be kind of cool to say I have 10,000 subscribers. I'm at 90. 400 so I only need 600 more people to come in and join and then I'll be up to that 10,000 mark so again thanks so much for watching I'm also going to be starting a new video series uh, using um, DAWs uh, specifically Logic Pro which is the one that I use the most and some of the plugins and mixing techniques that I use um, and you're going to see me working through an upcoming album of mine of Henry Mancini music that's going to be coming out this April so watch for that and thanks so much for watching have a great day.